What about, instead of steering by turning the wheels, we bend the whole vehicle? I previously made a snake robot which has multiple segments that could bend sideways and up and down. Each segment has powered wheels and that meant it could bend in all directions to get traction no matter what the terrain was. I really enjoyed doing that project, so now I'm going to make a much bigger one that I can ride on. So this time we're going to have to build a much heavier duty steel chassis that will carry my weight. And we're going to need pivot points so the whole robot can bend to steer. In order to bend up and down we're also going to need some extra pivot points that we had last time and we're going to need some much heavier duty servos to bend the whole robot but we'll talk about what those are in a minute. So you've probably noticed in the last couple of months I've been doing a lot of projects with steel in them and prior to that most of my stuff was 3D printed. There is still 3D printing in this project but I wanted to talk a bit more about making stuff out of steel. So of course we can make bigger structures that are much stronger and I can kind of make them quicker than I can with 3D printing but obviously there's quite a lot of manual work so most of the stuff I don't show on the video is things like cleaning all the steel so the welds are nice and clean. So all of that has to be cut, deburred, and I'm cleaning every piece with acetone here before we can go and centre punch and drill it. So obviously with 3D printing I can pretty much leave it unattended to make all the parts, although it might take slightly longer. But with making things out of steel or wood or manual processes, I can probably make a bigger structure that's stronger quicker, but it does involve lots of manual work. So effectively it's harder work. This project has multiple segments of course so that the snake can bend in all directions and that means I've got a lot of parts to make of the same. And instead of just printing them multiple times with a 3D printer, obviously I've actually got to manually make the parts, drilling all of the identical parts and marking them out and making sure they're accurate by hand. So we've drilled lots of holes in steel that's been cut to length. I'm now tapping a hole here and this is basically going to be the mount for the motor and as in a couple of the previous projects I'm using hoverboard motors and those are going to be held in place with a bolt which goes onto the flat of the shaft on that hoverboard. Now I've learnt my lesson in the previous projects and I'm actually welding a nut on to back that up so we're not just relying on the thread into the steel which is only about 2mm thick. So we've got four of those because we've got four segments and we're going to have four driven wheels. Obviously any bigger holes have to be drilled out, this is a 16mm hole cutting saw and that's for the main shaft of the mount of the hoverboard motor to go in. The basic plan is that we're going to mount two bits of metal on one end and that's going to hold a passive wheel which is actually a wheelchair wheel and that's the closest wheel I could buy which is a similar diameter to the hoverboard wheel. And that hoverboard wheel is going to mount into that hole which I've just put that nut on and drilled the bigger hole in. So let's weld that frame up. I'm TIG welding everything because I really like it. So we've got some clamps to hold all that metal in place. I'm just going to go round and weld all the straight edges to make the complete structure. And of course this has to be done four times because we've got four segments in our robot which are all pretty much identical apart from the front segment that we'll look at in a while. And my wire brush is one of my favourite welding tools. So here are the four segments and you'll notice that they're actually turned the opposite way round. So we've got four passive wheels and four hoverboard wheels. Only they're going to be more like this with a slight offset so those wheels run in line. We've still got to make the upper deck though so those servos can bend the robot up and down. But I'll save you lots of footage of welding and cutting and all of those repeated processes again. So here's the finished thing, we've got a T-shape at the front and a kind of rail at the back. And yes, I've had to do that at least three times apart from the front segment which has only got the rail at the back. Quite a lot of the parts for this project are 3D printed though and that's due to the fact that they've got complex geometry and it's the easiest way for me to make them. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And I'm using the Lolzbot HS 1.2 nozzle here which is 1.2mm so I can make those parts really tough and make them about four times quicker than a normal half millimetre nozzle. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects. So check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. And I'm just using standard PLA to make all of these parts, of which there's quite a few. Some of these parts have bearings in and what I've done is printed a bushing in a finer nozzle so I don't have to reprint the whole part if that hole isn't the right tolerance in the fat nozzle. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just click on instant quote and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. 
If you want the board assembled, then you can add a BOM and CPL file. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get five one to four layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB is a one stop shop with a team of trained engineers to manufacture and assemble your board under one roof. And with the new JLC PCB Parts Manager, you can check available stocks, order parts, or even request specific parts for your project. JLC PCB ships worldwide and they have fast build times, so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The JLC store also sells PCB coupons and offers free PCB designs and 3D designs. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. The small version of this project used standard size RC servos to move all of those segments to make it bend, but the bigger version is going to need something a bit more substantial. Yes, it's windscreen wiper motors, because they're super powerful motors and they're pretty cheap. So each of those is going to be mounted in a super 3D print printed with that 1.2mm nozzle that's got two recessed M5 bolts. And those bolt into the casing that normally holds that motor together, rather than mounted on the front on the actual mounting points. And I've made six of those because we've got two for each of the segments. Each of those motors has a spline shaft on and there's an M8 nut which fits on top of that and that would normally bolt down onto the cam that operates the windscreen wipers. RC servos normally come with servo horns which is the lever fitted onto the top, but I've got to make mine because I need something much more substantial made of steel. So I've got some 30mm wide steel that I'm drilling holes in, and I've got some super HSS drills here which seem to go straight through it. And I decided to countersink that hole so we can taper it so that it fits properly on that tapered spline shaft. Using my big vise and a spanner we can tighten that steel down and hopefully those splines cut into that countersunk taper. So that seems to have seated right down on the spline shaft that should give us loads of grip. And I can just about back drive these motors but they are a worm gear so it's pretty tricky and it's pretty stiff. We need to cut some CNC plywood parts out because we need to make platforms to put those wiper motors on and it's pretty tricky to mount them straight onto the steel frame because they push and pull in all sorts of different directions. So I'm cutting some parts out of 18mm ply and we've got three of those for each of the sections that those will be mounted on. I painted those silver so they don't look like plywood and of course each one mounts two wiper motors so the output shafts are directly opposite each other. Those get bolted down and that's looking like it's going to be pretty substantial. I'm going to use these rose joints with 10mm bolts as basically levers pushing off that servo horn, and on the other end of those we need that to push the next frame. So I've made these bent pieces of metal with 10mm holes in. Each of those mounts to the frame and there's a handy cutout to go around that T-piece and some bolt holes that are pre-drilled in all of the parts. So we now have 8 bolts holding the wiper motors and 8 bolts holding it to the frame, so that should be more than strong enough. To hinge off the frame we've got some more 3D prints with those bearings in, and we've got bolt holes cut in both of the parts. There's an intermediate section though because we need to effectively make a kind of universal joint, and that has 10mm studding through which I was going to bolt in, hence the recesses, but I just glued it in and that seems to be more than strong enough. Before I can link to the next section I need to weld the tabs on and yes those get welded on to three of the sections which are the front three sections because those are getting pushed from the previous sections. So now we can put the next piece of the 3D print on and that goes onto that C shape and of course the pattern then repeats from the front of that onto the next segment. So now we have four segments all together, three with servos on and one which is the front that currently has nothing mounted on it. Now we can work out the length of those rods with the rose joints on that are 10mm studding locked onto the rose joints with some nuts done up. And we'll just put some nuts onto those 10mm bolts on the tabs and the servo horns. It's time to put the wheels on, so those are just actually mounted on studding, those passive wheels have their own internal bearings and I'm using two nuts done up against each other to hold it in place. So those fit onto every opposite side, there's four of those in total, and the rest of them are hoverboard motors of which there's also four held in place with that nut I welded on earlier. The wheels aren't exactly the same diameter though, but I already worked out where to place the axles, and that's possible because there's not a solid axle between them. So I just pre-drilled the holes so that one of them's 3.5mm higher than the other. So now it goes active-passive, 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 active-passive. 
passive and that's all of our eight wheels. There's going to be quite a bit of electronics to be installed before we can actually move those wiper motors as servos which will be coming up next time but for now it seems to roll along pretty well and it moves pretty smoothly. It also looks pretty substantial so I'm pretty sure this is going to carry my weight and nothing's going to break and everything's going to be fine. So we'll just give that a test though before we carry on and seems to have absolutely no problems carrying my weight. Those servos aren't really back drivable so the whole thing stays in place. I set it up for a slight curve and everything seems to run just fine. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to ride it yet. I thought that maybe it could be ridden like a skateboard although steering is going to get really tricky. Or the other option was to just lie down on it a bit like Superman. But for now, I think perhaps I'll think about riding it like a motorbike with some sort of seat on. Or really, it's a bit like a little train, isn't it? But that looks pretty good to me. So next time we need to turn all of those wiper motors into servos by putting feedback on them and a microcontroller so we can control the position. And then we need to work out how I'm actually going to ride on this and how I'm going to control it because we can bend in two directions and of course we need some sort of accelerator. And we can also do a differential drive with the wheels on the inside and the outside when we go round corners. So it looks like it's going to carry my weight though, so not too worried about that. But if you want to see me actually riding on it, then don't forget to come back next time. And that's happening in the next video. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this once it's done. And the CAD and code for the previous version is already out there. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. And YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.